Um, when I first wanted to talk, it was more of a point of order, but since uh, it takes quite a while to get here, I'll just do my contribution to the motion. Uh, but also, for, for the record, it's important um, that I correct that the minority leader of the House, Senator James Orengo, misled the House. He misled the House when he stated that when he brought a motion back in 96 against Kaparo that he gave, he did not give any grounds or any reasons for the removal, for the censure. And I, can, I have that answered here in front of me, and it is clear that he gave, uh, he gave grounds. So it's a travesty, and it is, it is just immoral that we have a motion in this house here today to remove the very distinguished senator, Professor uh, Kindiki, without having any grounds. It's also very clear from the standing orders, Mr. Speaker, the standing order 96, Paragraph 4, no senator shall impute improper motive or any other senator or to a member of the National Assembly ex except upon a specific substantive motion of which at least three days notice has been given, uh, calling in question the conduct of that senator or a member of the Assembly. It's very clear here uh, what we are doing. We are moving forward with the removal of the Deputy Speaker of this House. So it was imperative and important that the motion that was brought here today by the Senator from Moranga be, have the grounds for removal. And as I stated earlier, uh, when Senator Orengo did his to Kaparo, he stated, uh, he had on the motion that the rulings uh, Kaparo had made were, were in air. So it's, it's inaccurate and improper to say that you can just bring a motion, you, uh, Mr. Speaker, to remove um, the Deputy Speaker without any grounds. So I, I, I really needed that for the record, because we have become a house that's just a useless house, if I may use the word, but I know they will jump with standing orders. Okay, let me rephrase it. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, uh, Senator. Susan. We have become a house that is contr controlled from other chambers, from other areas, from other places. And the most unfortunate thing is myself growing up, some of the senators that I looked up to, who were the defenders of human rights and other things in this country, are now the ones that are presiding or helping move this um, madness forward where you can have the removal of a very competent deputy speaker without any reasons. But anyway, I'm sure uh, you, you all will do whatever you, you will do. You will vote whichever way you will vote, because you carry brief for whoever you carry brief for. But I stand here today to say that some of us, whether we are two or five or ten, we shall continue to fight on, and we shall not allow the dictatorship that this country is uh, quickly, for, is quickly just becoming a dictatorship. And unfortunately, Senator Orengo, you fought so many battles to get away from that. But thanks to you, we are quickly moving that direction. But it is okay. In a, in maybe we shall have the third. Um, maybe we shall move forward and we shall be the ones to now lead this next uh, part in not just being uh, part of the axis of evil that is happening here today. Um, it also says a lot that as we call into question the, com the, the competency, I don't know, because again, we had no grounds for this uh, motion. I've heard the Senator of Muranga make some in his moving notes talk about a few things here and others who we thought were such defenders of democracy stand up and try to have him just proceed. And it is because most of you cannot look at yourselves in the mirror. And that is why you do not want to have any reasons as you remove this very competent man. You just are carrying brief and that's okay. So Mr. That's Speaker, sir, order, I oppose this motion. There's a point of order. Thank you, um, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Senator Kika doesn't have a seat to take. So today we'll offend the rules. Mr. Speaker. No, I can't sit. You said I can't sit where it's not, it doesn't say sit. Other senators, <laughs> continue in these extraordinary times. I will allow her to stand. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Speaker. I understand the, the the passion and the you know manner in which Senator Kika is speaking. But, Mr. Speaker, this is a House of Rules, and uh, certain things in our standing orders are being offended. 
Number one, when this house has been called useless, and the senator has said that she's rephrasing it, actually what should be done is withdrawing, because it cannot remain on the record of this house that a senator has expressed the uselessness of where she sits, because that speaks to many things. Number two, Mr. Speaker, when imputing improper motive by saying that the senators here who are leading this country into dictatorship and the senators here actually were, were part of the axis of evil, Mr. Speaker, that also goes against our standing orders in, 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 in um, what do you call it, imputing improper motive on colleagues. Mr. Speaker, when we allow the passionate expression of the uh, heart and whatever might be coming out, I urge you to ask that those words are withdrawn because they will forever remain on the record of this house, but her opinions are rightfully her opinions and she can express them, Mr. Speaker. I ask that you rule that our rules are followed with respect to those two issues that she has done. Um, I leave her to her conscience because she serves this house. She's a member of this house. And, uh, she knows what, I leave it to her conscience. That's all that I can say. That's all good. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. So anyway, as we leave here today, which, uh, whatever the decision that we shall make as a house, I, I oppose this motion. And let me say as I sit or as I walk away, that uh, Senator Kindiki, Professor Kindiki, has served this house with distinction. He is a man of honor in a house that does not value that. He is a man who is extremely competent, and I'm sure we shall not be able to see that as we move forward. But that's okay. That's the decision that we shall have to make here today. Senator, your time. One minute, your, your time. No, one minute, Mr. Speaker. I was interrupted with the many points of order. Okay. One Thank minute. you. Thank you. So um, this is a motion that is quite vile, dishonorable, and I hope that in future we can focus on fighting corona, the poverty that is in our country, instead of hiding behind corona to use dictatorship to remove people from office. I oppose this motion. Thank you. Senator Mauro. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have known Professor Kidure Kindiki since the year 2005. When, uh, What's your point of order, Senator Sakaja? Mr. Speaker, you know when I rose and, uh, and, 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 and questioned what is going on, there is a very dangerous precedent that is being set, Mr. Speaker. Standing orders 96, 1, 2, and 3 are clear about content of speeches, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, when a senator offends the standing order and we leave it to someone's conscience, Mr. Speaker, are we saying that then these standing orders are suggestions or are we going to follow standing orders? Senator Sakaja, I have made a ruling on that matter. What you are now doing is also challenging the speaker, which is out of order. Senator Maura, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I knew Professor Kidura Kindiki way back in the year 2005. That time he was a doctor at Moy University when we were working together on a project on human rights for people with disabilities with the York University. I'm sure Professor can remember that. And I greatly admired him. Later on, I could see him uh, making commentaries on TV on various political and legal issues. And all of that, to the extent that therefore, in the 11th Parliament, we were able to meet uh, uh, in, in, in the House. And um, Professor Kindiki, uh, if you see him on the floor of the house, you can see he's actually at peace, actually, with himself, because he has actually conducted himself in a very, um, uh, you know, honorable manner. And uh, he also has not forgotten his pedagogy, because when senators speak, he almost wants to award marks. You see, he would say, well, very well, you've spoken very well here and there, just to show that actually he's still having his... Um, his eyes on the academy. But Mr. Speaker, you know, since I joined politics, I've come to see <laughs> that politics really is the art of the possible, is who gets what, where, and how. In fact, it is, according to me, some form of amorphous formlessness. <laughs> it is the informality 
that constitutes the formal. And so therefore, there are no really clear rules. Because for example, there is no way you can explain how an individual A would vote for an individual B and not individual C. There is no guarantee, there is no threshold, it's just a choice. And again, in politics, there are no permanent friends or permanent enemies, only interests. Now, the late minority leader, Francis Nyenze, told me when I joined parliament, that time we had code and the Jubilee Coalition of TNA and URP, and code of WIPA, ODM, uh, and Fort Kenya and others. And he told me that Mwara, within six months, you will start seeing people changing their political allegiances. These things we are calling here will change. And indeed, he was vindicated. It is the same thing that we are also seeing uh, in this 12th parliament. Interests have changed, and a lot have changed. And I would want to say, just for purposes of record and transparency, that some of us, as Senator Kangata alluded to, uh, we are very much involved in ensuring that we do not come to this decision. And Senator James Orengo, you can bear me witness, and Senator Njeru Ndwiga and others. We really tried to ensure that indeed there is a pathway uh, that would ensure that an alternative, that the party confidence on the part of Professor Kindura Kindiki is actually restored, is actually perpetuated, so that we can continue to enjoy uh, his contributions and his presiding over this house. And I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, you agree that he's been very uh, uh, helpful uh, to you. But having said that, I think there comes a time where decisions have to be made because it's a matter of procedure. It is actually true, Mr. Speaker, that there is always this question about how parliamentary positions are filled, whether a party has a right to dewhip a member from a committee or a position of privilege, because all of us who hold any position in a committee or the House leadership are a result of the numbers. It's a game of numbers. It's a game of you are, you are actually placed you know, where you are supposed to be. And, and that is the case. But then when it comes to removal, it's always a question of is there an independence of parliament in that regard? So maybe in, in the future of our standing orders is something we want to converse because we are actually involving democracy. To see to it that then you actually mediate that process, you know, you interlocute that process so that then it is actually meter and you're able to, to do much more. So Professor Kindiki, as I conclude, because I can see the yellow line is there, I want to leave you with these words. In politics, your future allies are your current nemesis. And your current allies are your future detractors. In the end, what matters is that you arrived at your desired goal and position, and both friend and foe, ally and the alienated, we reckon, you are fan in their flame. Keep going. Thank you. Senator Kabaka. Yeah. 